Okay, so good afternoon or good morning or good evening, wherever you are. And what I want to do in this video is have a quick look at Capture One, have an overview of Capture One Pro, which I've been using for about nine months now, since the uh, late last year. And since I've used it, I've used it in a couple of videos, a couple of my workflow videos. And it's probably one of the things that I get the most questions about is my experience of using Capture One and how I find it. So what I want to do in this video is to give just kind of an introduction and overview to Capture One and talk a little bit about my own personal experience with it and, and, and how I use it in my own workflow. What I don't want to do and what I can't do is give an in-depth um, look at all of the different features and all of the different capabilities of Capture One. Uh, phase One have got a fantastic Capture One Pro Learning Hub, which is full of videos and pretty much everything that you need to know to get you going with the software. So if you want that kind of information, that's the place to go for that. I shall put a link in the description below for that. And what I also don't want to do is to turn this into a comparison video about Lightroom and Capture One and which is better and which is worse. Because uh, from my point of view, it's they're a little bit apples and oranges. They do slightly different things. They work in different ways. And I really can't say that one replaces the other or one is better than the other. They're just different. Uh, and I've found that in my own workflow, I still do use both. I use Capture One Pro alongside Lightroom. I do most of my editing editing now in Capture One Pro, but there are still quite a few features in Lightroom that Capture One Pro doesn't have. For example, it can't merge panoramas, it can't merge bracketed shots, uh, things like that. So I do find that I use both of them, but what I also, what I do find with Capture One is that I do much prefer the raw conversion from, from my Fuji files. It just gives me a little bit more details. If you can see this image that we're looking at now, if we just zoom in to, um, to 100%, I just find that the level of detail that it gets me is better than I can get out of Lightroom. Now, again, these things are subjective. I know a lot of people who use Lightroom who say that by using the sharpening and clarity and texture, they can get their files looking the same as they do in Capture One. And that's great, go ahead and do that. I'm not trying to convince you to use one or the other. From my own personal uh, experience, I just find that I prefer the detail that I get from Capture One a little bit more than I do with Lightroom. Uh, so for me, it works great as raw conversion. And then just some of the tools uh, for contrast and for color, again, I actually prefer them in Capture One. But as I said, my workflow involves both. And I would say that if you're a Fuji user, then it's certainly worth looking at Capture One Pro if just for the raw conversion. Now, the first thing that I'd like to do is to start off by looking at the, uh, at the workspace, because I think moving to any software can be incredibly intimidating, particularly when you're used to working in another piece of software, something like Lightroom. When you switch over to using something, it can be quite daunting just knowing where things are. So one of the first steps that I think that helps a lot is familiarizing yourself with the workspace. And what I found really helped is trying to make the workspace on Capture One as similar to uh, Lightroom as possible. Because it's very flexible, you can move around the different, the different tools, the different toolbars and things like that, the different panels, uh, and try to make the, the overall appearance of, of Capture One much more similar to the way that Lightroom works. And that I feel has helped me a lot with my workflow, I don't have to stop and think uh, where, where things are quite so much. So the first thing that I, that I did was move the, um, the toolbar over here on the right. I think by default, it's over here on the left in Capture One, uh, but I've switched it over to the right. So I've now got all of the different tools, basically like the, the panels in Lightroom. So everything is down there on the right. Uh, and the other thing is that, Capture One is designed so you're basically supposed to work your way through these different panels here, a little bit like uh, Lightroom with the with the viewer panel and then the, with the library panel and then the develop panel. So this would be the equivalent to the library panel here and then you, you work your way across. Now, I found that a lot of the tools were kind of divided among these different tabs. So what I did was uh, what you do is you can just take them out, uh, go to a different tab slide them in, I've already got layers there, so I'm, I'm just basically duplicating that. And that's basically put everything on, on one panel here. So all of the tools that I needed, crop, spot, navigator, layers, um, are all here on this, on this panel on the right-hand side. And I tried to do it as much as Lightroom, similar to Lightroom as possible. So we've got the histogram at the top, 
and then as you work down you've got the uh, the white balance and then the exposure which has got the similar tools the exposure contrast moving down through the different contrast tools high dynamic range which is uh, highlights and shadows levels curves clarity and then the color tools at the bottom and then sharpening tools below that and then the, the more special effects things like black and white film grain and vignetting at the bottom so what i found is that this feels very similar to me to the way that i work in lightroom i just basically work my start at the top and then work my way down through contrast and then color and as I said, it's very easy to move around. It's very flexible. You can move things in and out, up and down, and arrange it how you like. And then once you've done that, you can go to Window, Workspace, and save the workspace here. And then this basically, you can see, I've called it Andy's Workspace, is going to be set up, and that's your default. And that's how it's always going to look. Okay, now let's have a look at the way we organize files in Lightroom. So everything is done in this tab here on the left, and I use catalogs. Now a catalog in, in, uh, in Capture One is basically the same as a library in Lightroom. Uh, Ca uh, Capture One also has sessions, which I tend to not use. They're basically for short projects, and I find uh, a catalog works just in pretty much exactly the same way as a library in Lightroom, which is something that I'm familiar with and something that works really well. Now, as you can see, this is very similar to Lightroom. This, you've got these three tabs here, this, this lower one folders, and that's, that's basically a mirror of my hard drive. If we flip over to, to Lightroom, you can see here, it's exactly the same, uh, which is the same as my Finder, uh, it's organized in the same way. So this is the physical location of all of the images that I've got in this catalog. And then up here in the user collections, what we've got are projects and folders, which I've created, which have virtual copies of the images from here. So this is the physical location here at the bottom. These are all virtual copies, which means that I can take images from here and put them in multiple different uh, collections. Uh, and they won't be repeated because they're just virtual copies. You won't be taking up space on your hard drive. There's only one copy and that's here in the physical space in the hard drive. Now, what I do when I import and when you go to the import window is you see here uh, in the import to always leave this at current location. So that means that the images are going to be left where they are in the hard drive. They're not going to be, the physical images aren't going to be moved or imported actually into the Capture One catalog. They're going to be in uh, where they are on the hard drive. Uh, and as I said, you can see it mirrors the, uh, the way that I've got Lightroom because they're actually pointing at the same images. If you use this system, you can basically point uh, both Capture One and Lightroom at the exact same image on your, on your hard drive. Now, any adjustments that you make to it, either in Lightroom or Capture One, obviously aren't going to be copied across. You won't see those adjustments in Lightroom if you've made them in Capture One or vice versa. But the image will stay in the same place and it saves you from, uh, from duplicating images and just basically filling your hard drive up with more images than you need. And finally, when you delete an image from the collection, it's not gonna delete it from the hard drive. If you want to delete it from the hard drive, then you need to delete it from uh, the folders down here. And what would then happen is that when you go to Lightroom, that will be showing up as offline or that, the, that, that, that Lightroom can't find it because you've actually deleted it from the hard drive. All right, so let's move on to adjustments now. And you can see, as I said earlier, I've put all of the adjustments here on the right in this panel, which is very similar to the develop panel on Lightroom. And a lot of this will look very familiar, the histogram, crop, spot removal, uh, the navigator there, which is the same as in Photoshop. Then we have the white balance with Kelvin and the tint, exactly the same as in Lightroom. And then the exposure, which is now we would move into like the basic panel that you would have in Lightroom and you'll see here some differences. It doesn't have highlights and shadows nor blacks and whites. Now the highlights and the shadows are here in this next panel down the high dynamic range. One of the things that I like about Capture One Pro is that it has, in my opinion, uh, the way that it deals with, with pulling back highlights is better than in Lightroom. It just seems to make a smoother, cleaner job of highlights, particularly highlights that are very close to clipping. In Lightroom, they can look a little bit dirty um, and a little bit uh, just, just messy. They don't really look pleasant. But I find Capture One 
just does a little bit be better, a better job with, with highlights. So if I've got an image uh, like this one uh, where, the, where the water is clipping here, I find that Capture One is better at bringing back those details. So then you've got the shadows, uh, which again, it does a very good job with. When we get to things like blacks and whites, then we move down to these panels here, the levels and the curve. Now, Lightroom doesn't have levels, but it does have a curve, a tone curve. Uh, if I show you the histogram here, if you're not familiar with these tools, what you can see is that the histogram is, is, is duplicated here. And so we've got the shadows here on the left. This is the midtones, and then the highlights on the right. So by moving these uh, sliders here, we can, we can control the shadows or, or the midtones or the highlights. So if we want to move the black point, we can just slide this in a little bit or, or move that out a little bit there and that will change the black point and the white point. And one of the things that I tend to do quite a lot with, with my images, one quick tip, uh, I think you'll be able to see it on, on this layer here, is that this is, the, this is a, the layer for the land, is that I always tend to, to just lift the blacks a little bit on the tone curve because I just think that gives me, um, gives me more texture. It makes uh, the blacks a little bit less digital, a little bit more filmic, and just there's just a little bit more texture and a little bit more depth there. So most of that is pretty familiar with everything that you'll know from Lightroom. So where Capture One starts to get really quite different from Lightroom is in the fact that it uses layers. If you've used Photoshop at all, then you'll be used to layers and of making adjustments on different non-destructive layers, which are all piled up on top of the background image. Lightroom doesn't do that. Lightroom, it's non-destructive, but pretty much everything that you do is either is on, on one layer, is on the background layer with various filters like the gradient filter or radial filter on top of that. But Capture One works slightly differently in that it allows you to create separate layers and then do different adjustments on each one. So uh, basically you always start with the background layer. This is the core. You can make global adjustments on this and you've got access to all of the separate tools. Just let me close these windows so we can see a little bit more. Uh, but then what I find uh, is that I'd like to use separate layers for separate adjustments. Now, in Lightroom, you can make as many different uh, gradients as you like. You can do the same thing in Capture One, but each gradient has to be on a separate layer. So every time you want to make, uh, you want to add a gradient, for example, then you click here to create a layer. So let's Let's create a layer and then double click and hold here to get access to the different layers. So you've got draw mask, which is basically the same as brush. And you can see these have the same keystrokes. So B will give you a brush. You've got a linear gradient, which is G or a radial gradient. So um, if I want to select a radial gradient, then a linear gradient, then just, and then I just pull it down. And these dots, just like Lightroom, are the different, uh, the different gradients that I've already got on there. But each one, as you can see, as I click on one, if you look over on the right here, will take me to a different layer because each one is on a different layer, which I've named. So the first, um, the first layer here was just a gradient filter that I put on sky. And I hit, if I hit M, that's gonna show me the mask so I can see what area that I've affected. Uh, the next gradient I created was for the land. So you can see that there. Uh, again, click M to turn the uh, to turn the mask off. So basically, each different gradient, each different radial gradient, each different uh, mask that I create using a brush is done on a different layer. Now, one of the things that's great about Capture One is that when you use a, a gradient on in Lightroom, you're limited to the amount of tools you get. You only get access to the basic panel, and even then, some of the things are removed, so there's no vibrance, for example. But in Capture One, you've basically got access to all of the tools on every single layer. So if you want to use, for example, I don't know, the color editor tools on a, on a gradient mask, or if you want to use the curve or the levels tools, which I, as you can see, I've done quite a lot. So this layer is, is the land. This was me working on the foreground and not wanting to touch the sky. And I've used the, uh, the levels and did I use the curve and also the curve tool there, which is something that I can't do in Lightroom. I'm limited to just the regular sliders, the blacks, whites, the exposure, and things like that. I don't have the nuance of being able to use curves on something like um, a, 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 a gradient filter from the sky or a radial filter or something like that. And what this 
also allows me to do is that I can turn off just one of the filters. Now that's one of the things that's always bugged me a little bit about Lightroom is if I've added a gradient filter and I want to see what it looks like on and off, I can the the on the the activate uh, switch for the filters there turns all of the gradient filters on off or on, on or all of the radial filters off and on again but here like in Photoshop I can turn individual layers on and off and see how each one affects the um, the overall image so here we have a radial filter that I've used if I hit M you can see what I where it is uh, this is it here now the radial filters work in pretty much the same way as in in Lightroom uh, you pull them, you stretch them like that, you can rotate them, you can make them fatter, thinner, bigger, smaller, in very much the same way. Let's turn M off so we can see the mass. Now this is a, what, what I've done here with this is a, a trick that I do on quite a lot of images. I like to shape light and I use radial filters and gradient, uh, gradient filters to shape the light. So here what I've done is just created this uh, radial filter and just increase the exposure a little bit and then I usually warm that up a little bit just to give just the idea of the light moving across the landscape. If I turn it off you can see the, the effect that that's actually had. Uh, and the same thing with the vignettes in the bottom here. You can see that I've got a vignette uh, in the bottom left there and this one is a bottom right and these were done with uh, gradient filters. Now the idea of vignettes and, and using this radial filter, it's all about shaping the light. It's trying to move the eye in a particular way through the image to kind of make parts of the image slightly brighter and to give some direction to that using the, the radial filter. And then just a vignette in some of the less interesting parts in the bottom, of, bottom corners of the image there, just to pull your eye through the image to, the, to what I really want you to focus at when you're looking at the image. So let's have a look at a different image to have a look at the Luma Range feature, which is over here above the levels in Capture One Pro. Now, the Luma Range Luma masks are basically the same as the Luminosity Range masks in Lightroom, which you can add to gradient or radial filters or Luminosity masks in Photoshop. Now, in brief, what they allow you to do is to target a particular tonal range. So you can select just the shadow part of an image or just the mid-tones or just the highlights or you can remove part of the tonal range from an image so remove the shadows and have the have the adjustments that you make affect just that specific part of the image so as i say you can do them in lightroom on the filters but in capture one you can apply them globally or you can apply them on filters so just to give you an example here uh, this one is applied on a filter i, I made a, a, a gradient filter at the top and then i just hit luma range and you can see there that, that i by sliding this up and down, it basically, if you look at the shadows over here in the, in the top and top right and top left, by sliding it up and away from the shadows, I was deselecting the shadows. So the adjustment that I was making would only affect this part of the sky. So I wanted to darken the sky, but what I didn't want to do was to darken down this part of the mountain here. That would be almost like having a, an actual gradient filter across a physical, grid, a physical grad in front of the camera, which would also darken the bit of the landscape that it covers. So using the Luma masking, what I, what I can do here is just make it so that these shadows aren't affected and the adjustment that I made, which was just by pulling down the tone curve here in the, pan, in the, uh, in the curve tool, only affected uh, the brighter part of the sky. But you can, you know, you can slide this up and down and just affect uh, you can so you remove the highlights and changing this uh, angle here, moving the bottom, basically it affects the feathering or the fall off. So how gradual the change between the the tone that you that you're that you're selecting and the tones that are not selected is so yeah, like feathering or, or something like that. But on this particular on this particular image, what I chose to do was was do some luma masking just on the bright part of the sky there. So now let's have a look at color adjustment. Now color adjustment is usually one of the last things that I do. That's why I've got it below the, the different contrast tools here, the color editor and color balancer down here. And I usually use color till later in, the, in, the, in my workflow because 
contrast, any adjustments to contrast will also adjust the color. If you're increasing contrast in an image, you're going to increase the saturation. If you decrease contrast, then you'll decrease saturation. So it's only when I've actually got the contrast finished that I really feel that I'm in a place where I can start to seriously properly look at the color. And I usually do that with this tool here, the color editor, which has various different panels. There's the basic where you can see the color wheel is split up there. Uh, but I tend to go with advanced because I like to use the color dropper just to work specifically on a particular tone. So here the greens are what's really important. So I just select the greens there and you can see it, it shows me here on the color wheel exactly which part of it that I've selected. I can even blank everything else out by clicking this view selected color range there. That will make everything else go black and white, go monochrome. So that only the bits in color are the parts that I'm working at now. And you can see that I can slide the, uh, the hue up and down to change the actual tone of the greens to a more yellowy orangey green to a much brighter, more bluey green there. Let's just take that off so we can see it in context. Uh, and I can also open, open this out here, which just gives me a bit of wider leeway with the hue, etc., with the hue tool there. And then the saturation, which is, again, this is very similar to, to the tools that you would in Lightroom, desaturate that tone or increase the saturation. And then lightness, which is the same as the luminance slider. Uh, so that just makes it bright, makes that, that particular color tone brighter. And that makes that particular color tone darker. I can also expand this out by clicking that there, which increases the range of smoothness that I can get within the color. So let's just try and put that back because that's just looking a little bit strong there. I can't quite remember where it was, but it wasn't anything like that desaturated. I think it was a little bit more green, a little bit less saturated, somewhere around about there looks right. So another thing that you can do with this is, um, is you can go here to these three dots and create a mask from the selection. So the color tones that I've got selected there, just these greens, what this is gonna do, it's gonna create a mask from that, which if we go up to the layers, uh, we'll see here that now we've got this layer one. And if we hit M to show us the mask, that's the mask that it's created. So it created a mask just from that particular color tone that I was using. And I can now use any of these tools. So I can now apply levels or curves just to that particular tone so I can darken it. And it gives me a lot more control than the, just the luminance tool gave me in the, in the color editor there. So now I can just work on the midtones within that. I can go to curves, I can put an S curve in that. Uh, so again, it's, it's a really nice tool, uh, which, I, which again, I use quite a lot. And I do find that the color tools in Capture One are really quite powerful. So when you finish editing your image, when you've done all the adjustments that you want to make to it, the contrast and the, and the color, then the final step is to export that image. Now exporting on Capture One is done over here in this, with this little cog in the processing panel. Uh, and in the way that Lightroom has presets, uh, exporting presets, this has processing recipes. So you can create different ways in which you, you'd like to, uh, to export your images if you want a, a smaller version for the web or if you want a full resolution. Now, as I said earlier, any editor, any, any adjustments that I've made to the raw file in Capture One Pro are not gonna be, uh, you're not gonna be able to see them in Lightroom. So if you want to have a copy of that file, of those adjustments stored in your Lightroom uh, catalog, what I do is that I've created a processing recipe here where it exports a full size uncompressed TIFF file to this folder here, this destination folder, which is called auto imported folders on my hard drive. And then I've got Lightroom set up. So it automatically imports any folders from there. So if I click process. You can see that it's just processing it there. And then if we flick across to Lightroom, you'll see that it will appear here. There you go. In this folder, it's been automatically imported into that folder because I've got Lightroom set here. If you look at auto import photos, enable auto import, and you basically just create a folder there. So anything that is that appears in this folder is automatically imported into my Lightroom library. And the, the, the processing recipe that I've got in Capture One basically imports folder, imports images to that folder. So it kind of does a circle and now it appears 
in Lightroom. So what I can now do is then just drag and drop it anywhere on my hard drive so I would put it uh, wherever the original RAW file is stored. And if I drop it there, then it's gonna appear next to the original RAW file in my Lightroom catalog and also actually on the hard drive of my computer. What I won't be able to do is if I go here, I won't be able to see it in Capture One because I haven't imported it yet. But if I want to do that, then I would just click import and re-import the image. It's a little bit pointless because you'd just be importing uh, a version or a TIFF version of the file that you already have the raw of. So there's no point in doing it there unless you want to be able to view all of your files in Capture One. All right, so that's pretty much it for this video. As I said at the beginning, this wasn't meant to be a really in-depth look at all of the different features and aspects of Capture One Pro. It's just basically an overview of how I've been using it and what I found that I particularly like about it, some of the features that I find very useful in it. Uh, so I hope that's been interesting. I hope it's been useful. Uh, if you've got any questions at all, just drop me a line in the comments box or send me an email and I'll get back to you. And as ever, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and uh, take care. Yeah.